Well, what you've just learned is how uh, diverse of an approach each person here is, and this is five of 104. Um, so this exhibition has so many different ways of working, not only in medium, but in concept, and maybe even where you feel like you are at your career. Uh, maybe you took a break, maybe some emerging artists, even students are in this exhibition. The, um, some people that have been producing for 30 plus years are also. So it's really great to see a lot of the work come together and kind of become an equal playing field at some points where you're not sure if the work you're looking at is from you know, a young person in their early 20s or someone who's um, been experienced and more established in their career. This is what I look like, look at in curation. I think of curation as being actually an art form of its own. You're space building, you're guiding the viewer into seeing something. Um, so a lot of the times I was making sure, like you said, that two works were not fighting with each other. That was, or screaming was a term I kept saying that week of install. Is, is one screaming over the other or uh, are they singing? Is something being brought out out of your work or someone else's work that wouldn't have been seen if it was next to a different piece? Uh, which also, without speaking too much about the pandemic, is amazing. Let's just talk about the fact that artists continued over the last couple of years through all the ups and downs, many exhibitions closing, um, being postponed. I think we're finally to the point where hopefully things will not be closing and postponing anymore. But the fact that these works have made it through that time, none of these are works that came before, and I'm just showing them now, um, I think is beautiful. And I think that my overwhelming feeling helping with this was I didn't want any piece to feel like it was sidelined or lost or minimalized or, you know, it's, you want them all to feel like they are going to catch the viewer's eye as they move around through the space. Um, Megan, when, uh, and I've had your work now in this, sh in this space two times now, I've been blessed to have that, and congratulations on the sale of your work too, by the way. Um, it was interesting because people pull to it different ways. I'm not familiar with your themes, which are memory, um, and there were times where it was so easy to put it next to uh, a piece that kind of looked like landscape because it has that magnificent green and that, um, the outline of the tree but I knew every time it went there, it would pull your concept to landscape. So I was pretty stubborn on that. One of my favorite areas, which I did not expect, that I found, and it's really easy to see as a viewer right now, is these three right here, or these four even, and Todd Schuster's piece. This wall, um, there's a few works in there that I struggled to find a spot for, and all of a sudden they found a spot, and, and they're all very different. We have figures, we have mosaic, we have a very abstract work that so like sensitively handled. Then we have Pamela's great graphic abstractions next to Todd's, which is a um, piece that feels really familiar. It makes me feel like I know who that is. It's um, very carefully handled. A uh, shout out to Todd who's here tonight, um, who framed his piece this week. It's, it's lovely to see how those different pieces all of a sudden seem to find themselves in a level that I don't know without being paired like that would be pulled. Um, uh, just briefly, I am an artist as well, and one thing that I've found in exhibiting my work is that I do find relationships in my work when it's next to a piece that's not mine, that I wouldn't have found. My work gets pulled maybe to a, uh, a way of viewing that I maybe didn't add into what I was thinking about. You know, Maybe I wasn't thinking that my work is about feminism, but I'm next to an artist that's making work about, that's feministic, but I'm making work about my own life and I, I identify as a woman, so therefore it kind of lends itself to that direction. Or perhaps I'm next to a more graphic performance artist and I do performance work as well, but I find mine to be softer and all of a sudden it's pulled in another direction. So it's just exciting, I think, to be a part of an exhibition where you don't really know, the curator might put your work in a spot where you kind of feel a little stubborn about it, but all of a sudden you're like, oh great, I, I had no idea and now I'm gonna make some work that I didn't expect to make after this exhibition. I think Milwaukee is a hidden gem that's growing. Um, it's uh, slowly getting recognized and it's really exciting to have a space like this that is so public facing. I'm having people come in by accident and look at art and maybe buy a work of art. Where does that happen often? Not often, most spaces are just closed to the public for collectors to come in or um, 
they are uh, strictly museums, which don't really do artistic sales in that way. Um, so it's been really exciting to be here and be a part of be Milwaukee being recognized and the, the community and the public seeing the great work that is growing and changing here and that Milwaukee is a thriving arts community in itself, in its own right. Um, without further ado then, I just want to thank everybody once again for coming tonight. We are going to do another panel next week on Thursday um, with five other exhibiting artists in the exhibition. It will be more theme related to the exhibition, so if you're curious about that, same time. And then the following week will be a closing reception. So. Thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate it. It's our first panel in a while. Um, it feels really exciting. It's great to see everyone's face. Thank you.